This is how my success will be measured. So I'm not in competition with any preacher, with anybody. I want to enter into a bus and be sitting on my own and people are crying, give me Jesus. That's how I want to live. That's how I want to live. I may not be able to travel to all the nations of the world, but if, you, if my message gets to Mainama, I want people to listen and cry, give me Jesus. That's how I want to live. It was this understanding, this understanding that made Israel hallow the temple. They were very careful. That's the location where God dwells. So the Levites that did business with God realized that the man who is unclean, who lives outside the camp, and the man who is common, certain things may happen to them hmm? because we don't have the time to read it time is running so fast certain things may happen to them that will make them unclean so for instance remember i told you there is unclean there is common then there is holy for something to be unclean it needs to be polluted for something to be clean or common it needs to be washed. For something to be holy, to be made common, it needs to be profaned. That means it needs to be deconsecrated. It needs to be declassified. It needs to be desanctified. That means you remove it from consecration. You remove it from classification. You remove it from consecration, from sanctification. Then it becomes common. So to make something unholy, you profane it. To make something unclean, you pollute it. Are you still with me? And this is at the two things that Satan does. Though. Satan's job is to profane and to pollute. That's what he does. And what is he looking to profane and pollute? No longer the sanctuary, but the man. He wants to make you profane because if you are profane, you are useless to God. God can't use you to do anything. For God to be able to enter into covenant with you, remember where we began, you must be separated unto him. If he pollutes you, it's worse. You are useless to God, but it's even worse because you are now a host of a strange spirit. Where you are that you are common... It's just that you have been declassified. And then more than one, you are now committed to more than one God. You can be shared by more than one owner. But when he pollutes you, instead of you to be a router for divine presence, all kinds of unclean spirits will now have legal license to that vessel. This is Satan's agenda. So everyone that came into the holy place, the Levites understood that these other guys, if they become unclean, there's what they call purification rites. I told you to study Leviticus. Go and study. You will see all these things. So if somebody had a skin disease, he'll be asked to go through purification rites. He'll be sent outside the camp. And then once he's clean, he will come to the priest. The priest will check him and confirm, oh, the skin disease is gone. And then he will be returned into the camp. But what if a priest now became profaned? That's where we are reading in 44. And the Levites who went far from me when Israel went astray, who strayed away from me after what? What shall happen? They shall bear their iniquity. Next verse. Yet, they shall be ministers in my sanctuary as what? Gatekeepers of the house and ministers of the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people and they shall stand before them to what? 
Be is that not a beautiful thing? See, they shall slay the sacrifice. They shall take care of the burnt offering. They shall minister to my people. Next verse. Next verse. Because they minister to them before what? The idol. So continue your idolic ministry. Ooh, me lavanakate. Shall you remember in Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 31 that it was Jeremiah that showed us that the quality of preachers that stand in, before you are dependent on what you allow. Okay. Jeremiah 5 31. We're coming back to 44 12. He said the prophets prophesy what? And the priests rule by how? And what happened? My people love to have it what? It is out of the love of the people. If the people don't want prophets that are prophesying falsely, if the people don't want priests that are ruling by their own power, their market will close. He said, my people love to have it so. They enjoy it. The way they put it in the New Testament is that they heap onto themselves because of itching ears. They heap onto themselves teachers. Teachers that will come and feed their lusts. You see, brethren, the matters we are battling with in the modern day church is not just the matter of the corrupted pulpit. The matter is a corrupted people. You know why they do Suya Sunday? They know that if they put 24 hours Bible study, you won't come. There's no, there's no passion in your heart for Bible study. In those days, when Paul was coming into a city, people gathered. Paul will teach from morning till night. People are still there. The one that is sleeping and falling and dying is sleeping, falling and dying. But everybody is there. Hearts burning. Bro, I was telling them in Auchi that you see, it occurred to me that years ago, 500, 7, 800, 900, 1000 years ago, they didn't have the Bible in multiple translations. Eh? Is this old King James? Have you seen the real old King James? Have you seen it? I would have read one for you, no time. I have. One Bible that is called literal translation. Hmm? If I read it, your brain will just, will just skip. This is what our fathers read. Huh? They didn't say, I don't understand it. Give me concordance. The same Holy Ghost. Umanakai. The same Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, that you have, that you say you can do 10 hours stretch. They sat with this thou disease, did it, unto it, did it. On, they sat with it and their hearts burned. Many of them died for that thing. They read it in the night without electricity. Oil, oil lamp. Oil lamp. They burnt oil lamp over their Bible. Some of them, if you saw their Bibles, their Bibles were stained eh, with their own sweat and their own tears. As they read it, they wept. Oh my God. As they read it, they wept. Those words that they read took them to their death. We have it in multiple translations. We don't read it. It's in basic English. It's in English standard version. It's in amplified. We don't read it. We don't read it. 
People are still crying that they can't understand the Bible. Which Holy Ghost do you have? Which Holy Ghost do you have? Have you sat down with the Bible and said, Holy Spirit, teach me? Who taught our fathers? Now, you even have books. People have had encounters with God and written books. They had no books. All they had was that old Bible. They sat with it. Their hearts burned. Burned. You couldn't deceive those kind of people. You come there and you talk rubbish. So what is this? What, what, what nonsense? Those kind of people, you can't tell them about breakthrough is coming next week. That was not their burden. They wanted to find God. That I may see him as I have seen him in the sanctuary. That I may see him. They were in love with God. The people, there is a mad lust in the heart of the Christian. Call him for Bible study. He doesn't want to come. He's looking for a preacher. He can be sending questions 24 hours of the day. The discipline to sit down and stay on a chapter of the Bible until it cracks is lost. We don't know how to meditate on scriptures anymore. There's so much lost. We want to, we want to be coming into church and they are clapping for us. I celebrate you. I celebrate you. Don't go and say what I did not say. I didn't say it's wrong. But where is that thing coming from? It's you that is driving the preacher. You. There's something you are desiring. The preacher now is under pressure. They won't come. They won't come. If you don't do something on Valentine's Day, they will go to the clubs. What kind of goats are we raising? In the place of sheep. If they are the sheep of Jesus... You don't need an alternate system to Babylon to keep them. What they have in Zion should be enough. There's enough bread on the mountains of the Lord. Say, if you don't do, if you don't do something on Valentine, let's do something on Valentine. If we don't do something, so that our teenagers will not go to the club. That's how we started coming up with all kinds of things. All kinds of loss. That's when we started hearing things like wealth transfer. Sounds very nice. But what it has done is has raised a lost, a generation that will do anything for money. Do anything for money. We don't look like our fathers. In their day, the word of God was enough to gather them. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. It was enough to gather them. Enough. You come to their Bible meetings and one teacher is teaching and one is weeping there. One is praying there. One is on his face there. The same meeting. Men entering into encounters. The great men we talk about now, the way they became great was that old King James Bible. They read it. They read it. Ate it. Until they began to look like the God they were interfacing with on a daily basis. The people love to have it so. Shepherds that are now for sale. The people's lust has become the token of transaction. That every shepherd now has a price tag. He wants to keep the people. You see me, I'm not afraid to preach like Jesus. If you see the way Jesus preached, you will think that he wanted people not to follow him. His teachings were like designed to drive you. They were designed like that so that only the sincere seekers will come for the knives of circumcision. Narrow is the way that leads to life, but few find it. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many! How can a man be preaching like that? If any man will come after me and does not hate father, hate mother, hate brothers, hate in-laws, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. How does a man preach like that? If you don't eat my flesh, you have no portion in me. 
The Bible says when they heard it, they turned away from him. And he looked at Peter. He said, will you also go? Peter said, to where? To whom shall we go? With you is not the breakthrough of tomorrow at the words of life. With you there is fresh bread. Fresh bread. Fresh bread. Like I was telling you yesterday, many of you don't know that where you are going, what they are giving you is not the bread of the presence. It's common bread. Bread that people who fornicate eat. Bread that thieves eat. Look at what the prophet told him. He said, we don't have common bread. If you want to eat this bread, you must have at least kept yourselves from what? From women. It's the bread of the presence. The sexually immoral don't eat it. Go back to 44 verse 12. I don't have time now. He said, because they ministered to them before their idols and caused the house of Israel to what? Fall into iniquity. Therefore, I have raised my hand in an oath against them, says the Lord God, that they shall bear their iniquity. Next verse. And they shall not what? Come near me to minister to me as a priest. Nor come near any of what? My holy things. Nor into the what? Most holy place. But they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have what? So they are still in ministry but they can't minister unto God. So what kind of ministry are they? Outside the camp. Outer court ministry. Ministering to the people. So you can still be singing. Eh? He's still singing. Eh? Meanwhile, he's outside the camp. He's ministering to the lost and the idols of the people. Look at the progression. They shall not come near me. So they are priesthood. They are no longer priests. So. But they are still serving. Hmm? He cannot come near my what? Holy things. So there is the Lord who is holy. His things are holy. His place is most holy. He says, these three places, again, how many units? Three. The Lord, his things, his place. He said, they shall not come near. But they will still be doing ministry. There are preachers like this. Some have small congregations, some have large. God has given them. Say, minister. Enjoy. Is it not people? Take since the idols of the people's heart have become the focus of your ministry, minister. Say, but me, you can't come close. Bro, let me ask a simple question. What is the use of this kind of life? What then is the use of this kind of life? I needed to show you this because somebody will say, but they have results. What results do you have that you are coming to talk? <laughs> Don't worry. In the day of the final separation, you know this thing? Eh? Nobody will know. Nobody will know. It's ministry now. When we read, when we read the first verse, people will say, yes, it's good ministry. You see doing burnt offering. He's doing but his outer court is 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 he has been sentenced outside of the presence. He's still doing ministry. Clouds are still going. Do you know that in this place the people will still be getting blessed too? Oh, you don't know. <laughs> the people will still be falling under the anointing. If he does altar call, the people will still come. Meanwhile, 
the man in question, God has raised his hand and swore an oath. I have rejected this one. Next verse. Nevertheless, I will make them keep charge of the temple for all his work and for all that has to be done in it. So they will be temp laboring. But him, his holy things, his most holy place, they're not going to enter. Why, Benjamin? Our God is what? Holy. Hmm. Holy Spirit, help me. Next verse. But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok. I pray they are sons of Zadok here. Yeah. He says, what was their, what was their, what, what distinguished them? He says, they kept my what? Charge of my what? Sanctuary. When the children of Israel went astray for me. These are people who were defending the sanctuary. Whether we are looking at it in the context of you as the Lord's sanctuary. They kept my sanctuary. When others Israelites were going astray after idols, they kept charge of my sanctuary. Say so never. I know the God I serve is holy. His sanctuary must also be holy. He said, they shall come near me to do what? To minister to me. And they shall do what? Stand before me. To offer to me the fat and the blood, says the Lord God. Hi. You see me? This is the one I like. That I can come near to him. I can still perform my priestly duties consistently committedly me and god still have something our relationship unbroken our fellowship uncorrupted un 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 our communion still sweet still rich still deep i can still look at him and say baba kesena is here to minister unto him. This is why he brought you out of Egypt. Not the, the, the motivation for bringing you out of Egypt is not Canaan. As good as the land of milk and honey was, he said, what I did was to bring you to where? Myself. Bring it to myself. Next verse. They shall enter my sanctuary. Oh, man, okay. They shall come near my table to minister to me. And they shall do what? Keep my charge. Next verse. And it shall be whenever they enter into the gates of the inner court that they shall put on linen garments. No wool shall come unto them upon them while they minister within the gates of the inner court or within the house. Yes. They shall have linen turbans on their heads and linen trousers on their bodies. They shall not clothe themselves with anything that causes sweat. Next verse. Next verse. When they go out of the court to the outer court to the outer court to the people, they shall take off their garments in which they have ministered, leave them in the holy chambers and put on other garments and in their holy garments they shall not sanctify the people. Next verse. They shall neither shave their heads nor let their hair grow long, but they shall keep them well trimmed. Next verse. No priest shall drink wine when he enters where? The inner court. Next verse. They shall not take as a wife a widow or a divorced woman, but take virgins of the descendants of the house of Israel or widows of priests. So even in matters of their marriage, they must be consecrated unto God. They could not marry foreigners. My last verse. And they shall do what? Teach my people. The difference between what? The holy and unholy. 
and cause them to discern between what? The clean and unclean. So, because they have now built something with the Lord, their assignment is simple. In your consistent engagement with the Lord, you now come out and you begin to teach the difference between the holy and the unholy that's the holy and the common and then help them to be able to discern between the clean and the unclean the problem we are facing in the body of Christ now is these priests are the ones the church hates We don't want anybody to come and say there's supposed to be a distinction. And notice between the unclean and the clean, what the teaching, if you teach correctly the difference between the holy and unholy, a sign that the people have been well taught is that they will have heightened discernment. So when they see something that is unclean, they say, No. This thing is unclean. When they see something that is clean, they know this is clean. When you see a Christian obviously celebrating a pollution and a corruption and a compromise, the problem is that the priest did not teach him properly. So he cannot discern. You need discernment to know the difference between the unclean and the clean. So, what has happened in the New Testament now is because we, every one of us is a priest. Every one of us have been called into the priesthood. Remember, you are the temple, you are the priest, you are the altar, you are the sacrifice. Because all of us have been called in, Satan will come after you with his two-point agenda to profane or to pollute. And in the pollution, there are three classifications of men. Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ has also loved us, and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice. To God for his sweet smelling aroma. Like this. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named amongst you as is fitting for sins. Verse 4. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. Verse 5. For this you know. That no number one fornicator, number two unclean person, number three covetous man. These are the three classifications of men the sexually immoral, the fornicator, the unclean person, the leper, the third one, the covetous man. That is the lover of the world. Give me this, give me verse four. Go to verse four and give me NLT. Okay, go to verse 3. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed. Wow! Among you. Such sins have no place among. Next verse. Obscene stories. Those things that they call comedies. That you laugh at. They are obscene stories. Stories with sexual innuendos. Because it's, it's sex and nudity that sells now. It sells now. In fact, there's a young man doing great work on TikTok. Great work. Many times I'm driving. I think, where were we coming from? Where that road safety is? Was it Uyo? Uyo? Many of the people that know me on the road, they say, I see your message on TikTok. He's doing great work. Because TikTok, the darkness in TikTok, Eh? Even village people don't know it. 
Somebody can just come on TikTok, remove their blouse, and, and it, five million views. Nakedness, immorality is on TikTok. But this young man consistently posting messages, myself, other men of God, trying to saturate the space. Because there are all kinds of obscenity.